welcome Julian to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Goroth, this new album, The Orb, and more things related to the metal world. We start with a common question, I think, in the, in the old interviews that you, the, the band did. So why did the band take five years to release a new album? Because this is the first time the band took so long compared to the previous album. So I'm, I'm perhaps into this apps, but the pandemic accelerated the composition process of this new album because many musicians, as you know, and the war have more time, had more time to compose and record the album. Yeah. So yeah, no, normally it's like yeah, for five years, but yeah, in the end, so let's say the previous album was released at the end of 2018. So exactly, it was the uh, 19th of October, 2018. <laughs> and so we we're supposed to put this, uh, first of all, the plan was to make this new album ready for late 2022. So let's say it should have been four years, but yeah, sure. The pandemic is the explanation of it. Because um, I mean, for many artists, it was like, this is an opportunity to have some free time to make new music or else. But for us, it was it didn't work that way at all because uh, we are definitely a live band. What we enjoy is to be on tour, is traveling together, having fun together and performing on stage. And I mean, we are not a studio band, not at all. If there is no purpose, if there is no goal, like to be on stage and to make a tour for us there is no yeah it makes no sense to make music just like for putting out music we, we enjoy making music sure and making albums but this is not what is really exciting for us and so the thing is that um when the covid started and then sure everything was cancelled and 2020 was you know, supposed to be the last year of the promoter promotion of the previous album and so many plans were cancelled, but this is the same for many. But actually, we, we were pretty lucky because we managed to tour with that album. I know that many album, many bands just released their album right before that and were unable to tour <laughs> to promote their album. So that was actually even worse. So the thing we are not being, we have not been able to tour in Europe in our location because the, our latest tour was in the US. And then we have to start to do something new. So we started to make like one song during the COVID. And this song is, is on the album actually, but it, it looked like a bit different. So this song is uh, Walls of Shades. So this is the track number seven, if I'm not wrong on the album. And um, the thing is like, we, we, we made it and then no shows, nothing. So we didn't see each other for a while. It, we were, there was no motivation for us to make music. So it, lasted long because it took like a, a bit more than one year to finally get back to normal more or less and then to have shows scheduled and then when we started to see the light <laughs> i would say say okay then we were we gained motivation again and we started to, to so there was more a break but without composing for us it was not really effective like to put out new music because the, this period was not that much inspiring for me and for the others. So, yeah, we lost a lot of time because of it. Definitely. Mm, oh, nice to hear. A lot of history is there. So, um, Don, I've been listening, I've been listening many times to this new, the Orb. The orb. So, where I didn't know that Goro yeah. drinks from the past albums and then the, the one of the last 10 years. So, in, in this aspect, do you think that these scales of the pandemic and war influence and economic problems around the world um, uh, influence you to do a more challenging album than the previous three trio with you? Because the musicians have yeah. a lot of connection with external and internal details of the environment in general. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. For us, it was really a shock like the in the end, yeah, sure. It, we know we play, so let's say, a nerdy music. So this is technical stuff with a lot of progressive elements. A lot. It's, it's really, um, really dense. <laughs> there is a lot of information in it. And this is some kind of music that you're sure you can make in a workshop. I mean, you can make it home. You don't need that outside to make it. But we are definitely not working that way. And this... Uh, to, to be honest, really, the spirit was absolutely not inspiring, except in criticizing everything. And, you know, we are French and we are into protesting, demonstration, like angry. <laughs> you know? This is really not a current show in a way. And this actually, this is exactly what is happening right now. And also the pandemic started 
and there was huge demonstrations. I mean, not only in France, it was kind of everywhere I know. And it stopped directly the protests. And for us, like it was like, okay, sure, there is another emergency, but also that's a good excuse for the states to, okay, they finally all the people are peaceful because they are locked down, they are home, they are not protesting against anything, that they were voting laws that are super unfair, and now they're just restarting the program on it. And normally we are a band that is not really inspired by the political atmosphere. I would say. But for this album, there is an exception. I mean, the previous one was inspired by the moon. That was the overall topic. And I was following, like I'm doing most of the time. So the musicianship is always composed the same. It comes from one mastermind who is making the whole music. And then I'm getting inspired by his music and write the lyrics. And the lyrics were inspiring in a very spiritual way. Like, uh, I was following my passion for art history, and it's all about spirituality and art. But for this new album, the, then I chose the topic of the sun, but it, it's a way more trivial and direct and connected with the reality, with our what was really happening in the world, what we were living, what we were experiencing. And so it's more, yeah, trivial, I would say. This is uh, how, how goes this album. So it's, it's more inspired with our environments than in the overall culture, because I was always, I was always been fascinated by the past, by the old civilization and everything, and make a comparison between old and new, and often, often notice that we are always repeating the same cycle and the same history. But yeah, also this new album is also following this process, but more uh, connected with what we have been experienced. So sure, there is a bit more. Um, real things, <laughs> I would say modern or uh, things connected with the news and with what we are living right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, great, that's great, that's great to hear. So, when talking about, about the subject of living influence, you see this, this is political aspect, but in, in also this matter and feelings, what happens internally and externally for the musicians in general. Many musicians say that they, they don't have a direction when writing music and carry away by the feelings that they have in the moment. So, for you, how do mm -hmm. the parts of producing an album connect with the idea or sensation of the need? Could we say that the music for you is a concept thinking or perhaps it's a concept not thinking because a lot of musicians use numbers to create to create riffs, to create mm -hmm. schemes, but at the same time they deliver a lot of feelings into there. So how do, how do these parts connect? And perhaps for you always the music is more more, sen more mathematical than, sense than that feeling. So I know it sounds technical and complicated, so we could feel like it's written in a very technical way, but not that much in the end, because yeah, there is the, um, really Gorov is a composition. I mean, the music, this is this comes from the brain, from the mind of one man. And this man loves music inspired. So he's really connected with the progressive rock from the 70s. And, you know, um, also he's listening a lot of to uh, jazz and he's into funk music, but technical things in, in this way. So, uh, I mean, you know, even this uh, in the 70s, there was a lot of groovy music, but in the end, it was pretty much complicated. If I refer to, uh, for instance, uh, King Crimson which is one of our favorite bands. <laughs> I mean, among uh, in the in the whole lineup, we all agree with, with King Crimson, which is like an amazing thing. But King Crimson sure were writing very, uh, I would say, uh, spontaneous music. It, it sounds also very organic. When you listen to the first album, so some songs are pretty poppy, are pretty easy, so the vocals. But when you make a proper analysis of the music, then you realize this is extremely complicated. And uh, it started to be more and more progressive, step by step, sure. When it comes to the album Red, which was released in 74 or 75, something like this, this one is really technical and like make more makes more connection. So we are inspired by, yeah, sure, bands like Led Zeppelin and all this uh, so, uh, some music, which is, in the end, this is just rock, which became became a bit more complicated with a bit of classical elements, classical music and jazz. Both of them are pretty important, and we make a combination of all of that. So, sure, there is a 
Um, we need skills, we need technicality to make it. So this is, let's say, the classical heritage because uh, most of the musicians here in Deadburn have been following a classical, uh, uh, let's say, schools, also like that. So we know the music theory and the thing, but all what matters all to us is to play something that comes from our heart. So there is, in the end, there is also, we try to get rid of some rules to put a bit more feeling. But sure, we are always in this little prison, which is classic uh, teaching. And so this is, I guess, yeah, this one is both a combination of this. So this comes from a classic heritage, but bringing a bit more crazy new things or stuff that comes from the heart. It's not, um, it's, it's not fully played play with machines. And so uh, there is not a single riff that is written with numbers. This yeah. is just riffs. That yeah. puffs in the mind of Matthew, and this is his way to write music. It's not like I, I know when he's writing riffs, he's just composing some drum tracks and making some improvisation on it, and then we got riffs. So just like making music, the let's say the, not the easy way, but the more or less normal way, with not that much, uh, that many weird or uh, strange experimentation. Mm -hmm. So we are sure. Yeah, well, well. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay. So, talking about this, uh, the, the, from the new album, Victory, Breathing Silence, and The Orf, were the three first singles for for the new album. For that, in a world where more singles, where more and more singles are important to promote an album, so how was the process mm -hmm. of select these singles within an album of many sensations? As you said, you have a lot of sensation of this new one. So, it was your idea... Mm -hmm. Or perhaps it was from the marketing area that Orb has, or because for me these these songs selected for the singles are just one part of an album because I'm from the eighties. I prefer to hear all album. I don't I don't like I don't like yeah. the, the singles. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And I absolutely understand it. The thing is that uh, we're, I mean, uh, after the pandemic and all the thing, we're thinking like. Are we able to, does it make sense to make an album in 2022? We're asking ourselves that question. So first of all, we didn't, we were not like ready to write like a whole full length album. So we say, we'll see how it, how, how is the turnout in the end? Because all what we wanted is to play live, but there was still, it was still hard to book a tour, to find shows. And so finally we managed to, okay, we'll see there is an option and we get back to light. And so there is a, an option to be back on tour for real. So let's make an album. But the the first thing, it was just what we were more into writing singles and may, probably make it like an EP or something like that. The purpose was not to make an album. So it became an album afterwards. So this is why, yeah, these, these singles were released previously, and then we try to make them fit with the album, but all of them were then afterwards re-recorded. So on the album, sure, there's a bit different version than the singles, and sure, the, the production is the same, I mean, it's the same recording session with the same mixer and the same mastering for all this, for the album, and sure, the, when we released the single, it was a different mixing and different mastering, so mm -hmm. sure, there was, um, there was some slightly change, but yeah, it, it's just the reality of what we were experiencing, because yeah, we didn't know if we had to make an album or to make singles. We, we were kind of lost. <laughs> and so this is the illustration of all this. So in the end, we made an album with, first of all, singles, and then we say, okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And then it's an album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I know every album is special for you. For you and, the most, and, the, and for most bands, the last album is always their best effort. So let me ask... So what what does the album mean mean in Goro's career? This new album means to you. How much did the feeling do you have and me and and the way you compose change compared to the times when you entered to the band in two thousand ten and released your your first album with with Goro with Goro a perfect mm. absolute absolution in two thousand twelve. Yeah. So um, yeah, for instance, uh, perfect absolution is a good example because this this is. Typically, the album that was composed in a rush, in a very short period of time, because we knew that uh, our manager back in the time managed to book a tour with Obscura and Spawn of Possession. So we knew we had to make this tour, but we had no album. <laughs> we had to make a new album. Okay, so <laughs> let's go for it. So like it was composed super fast. I was writing the lyrics in 
couple of months and uh, I mean couple probably two like everything was made like very 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 shortly and then phew, there is something that is extremely spontaneous in this one because it, it was just like super one shot and this new one is completely different in the way you know there was first one single then a second single then we took another old song and to make it then fit together but we changed the songs the perfect absolution it was not that we didn't have time to think <laughs> we just had to make the things so that was the first trial that was the good one <laughs> and that was it <laughs> so there was there was no second chance to um, make a better song with a thing so in the end that's interesting because this is a different process and this is also what i like with the perfect absolution because sometimes i feel like okay this i can hear this is the first trial because when i really listen to it i say i would have never done that way if i would have really listened to the song but then it's like this and then i'm used to listening to it that way but yeah with, with the new album there are some songs for instance walls of shades which was which is actually the oldest uh, if I listen to the first version and the one on the album, this is really different. So this, that I, I don't mean it's a different song, but we had time to think about it, to have some step backwards. And so in the end, with this album, we made a combination of a lot of different stuff. And in the way out, I, I, it's hard to say that, yeah, sure, the new one is the best. But to me, this is one of the most interesting because it's making a combination of the entire career of the band. Because there are songs that sounds like the first album, then from the song like the second, the third. So for the, the very first period of Gora. And also there are a couple of new stuff we try to make to bring some new experimental shit. And also you know, to, to sound like also the previous, like the, the latest one that were a bit more brutal and dark. So I think it's what is cool with the new album. This is a combination of um, of all the whole Goro discography and you cannot get bored by listening to it because it's pretty, it's not that short, it's like 45 minutes. So it is a decent album, but I, I hope that when some people start to, to press play on the first song and then you are the last song oh it's already the last song and i think that's this one yeah it feels like it's short because there isn't this is a big a huge trip and with references with, of everything we did in the past and hopefully in the future we'll see <laughs> okay okay so talking about a little more the, the, the history when especially in all the, for discography many of us uh, knew Gorod with Neuro, Neuro, Neuro Trip 6 in 2005 yep. because, and Lead in Visions in 2006. I love both albums and the beginning. So, and we are impressed by the musical label of those albums at that time. So, yeah. what is your point of view? Uh, or what is your point of view when the fans, critics, a lot of people more say, who says that the first albums are the big stones in their career until now? And always, uh, is is the day like say like the best effort until the date. So and maybe or maybe also you think this way be, from your records that influence you to do this kind of music or in gen general music. The first record of your influence are the great stones of their career for the bands that you like, metal, jazz, yeah. etc., etc. Et so what is your opinion about this album? And maybe you perhaps you have um, a favorite girl album. There is different, like the first two, or perhaps this last album, or the other one. This perhaps you prefer one. So yeah, for me, just for, for my history, uh, so I got into the, um, I joined the band in two thousand ten. So for the releasing of the fourth album, so there were already three albums that existed, and but I knew them for a while. We are all old friends, so <laughs> I didn't came pop up like in the band like surprise. No, I was a friend of all of them. And the previous singer, we didn't have time to make a job, just asked me, okay, can you make a fill-in? But we knew that we are different. <laughs> we are different singers. And my good uh, Guillaume is like a pure death metal beast. This is especially. And according to vocals, I'm really interested by everything. I mean, most of this time I am clean singing <laughs> most of the time, but I'm so into hardcore, black metal, grindcore, noisecore, um, really extreme death metal, but not not that much classic stuff. I love really fast and noisy stuff. And Gorod is very melodic and very yeah. gentle <laughs> compared to what I'm used to listen to. But so I had to make to make the transition 
soft as soft as possible with the previous one and and the next one and in, and when i joined the band actually my favorite album was leading vision mm -hmm. this was my album this was there's all the tracks are absolutely yeah. perfection to me and i always say that to you to them to match i love this album so much i'm listening to this one because there is the groove from the beginning and there is the it's a bit faster than a process of a new decline it's extremely technical but um there are one of the best songs on this one but as a whole album it's for me it's hard to listen to it in its entirety as leading vision is a masterpiece from beginning to the end like this is perfectly balanced and i always wanted for that gora came back to this kind of roots as well but bringing new stuff and this is something I think we try to do with this new album. So we brought a lot of new stuff, but there has never been that much references to Leading Vision and also Process of Non Decline in the new one. If you make an analysis like of the song, like you just you just look at the drum track and the guitar track, they are super close <laughs> in the end. <laughs> this is just the sound that changed a bit. We changed a bit the vocal, the way to put it, but in the end, this is a tribute to our old stuff, but integrating also new things. So sure, we don't want you um, to get stuck in the past, like reproducing all the time the same music. We want to evolve, you know. We know we are not like um, I, I, I will I don't say bad things about them. I am a super big fan of Cannibal Corpse since the beginning, and what I love with Cannibal Corpse is that every album is exactly the same, and yeah. that's the good thing. But we are not into this kind of stuff. We are more trying to make new stuff. And we don't want to like make a second leading vision or a second uh, process of non decline all the time. We want to make new album with very new things. And so this is complicated. So we have two choice, but in the end, we just play what we want and what we what makes us what makes us feel good in the end. So so for us it was a good time because we had a long time to make music to think about it think about making co the combination with the past and bring new stuff also so i think you would tell us if we managed to make it but this was his purpose <laughs> okay 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 so speaking a bit about the, the when well, speaking about the history of the band and the first two albums mm -hmm. as you said you joined the band in 2010 2010 mm -hmm. where you grow when well, when you when you growling have gave another trees of the sound of Indigoro band because as you say the first two albums is more dead straight and you changed completely because your voice is more influenced with the hardcore staff a lot of more yeah. grindcore stuff so you have you have the have a different different one well, different sound compared to the previous two so tell me how do you adapt with the songs songs by the glue in the first two album do you do it the same or do you put a modern version of Goro on it? Uh, and perhaps it's difficult to you emulate some things of the first vocalist of Goro because it's sometimes, as you said, it's very different. I mean, for when we perform the old songs that was written by Guillaume, I'm doing on stage, I'm doing the same like he did. I'm not changing almost anything, just some few little parts. I'm putting just a bit higher pitch or more medium, but just on some couple of screams, but not that much. I mean, 90% is uh, try to respect because it sounds good that way and I don't have to change it. It's, there's just a little bit of interpretation, but not a change, not a major change. As you know, I, 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 I mean, I'm more uh, into, I'm, I'm into every kind of scene because actually my, my first death metal band, we created it in 1998 and Gorod was created in 1997. So <laughs> I'm playing death metal for a while as well. But this is um, this uh, typical of uh, low growls. I was I I don't mean I quit doing it, but this was not what I was doing most of the time. But um, I can I can do it. That's not a problem. And, but doing that uh, all the time, I'm not having that much fun. But when we are performing the old song, yeah, for me it has to sound like on the album. This is super important to me too. Mm. I mean, and so also honest for the fans and for everything. So yeah, when it's when it comes. For live performance, I'm not changing the mm. just little interpretation as I mean before, but respecting his work. <laughs> mm. That's okay, important. Okay, so introducing ourselves to this name, to the name change with topic, because you know, maybe you know the where were the reasons why the band decided to go by Gorgons at the first time. 
and then mm -hmm. Gorok. So people, all, 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 all know, all, all we know that these changes was because Gorgos is from the brutal death metal scene from US, all not. But the curious things about the the changes for me especially is that the the, the band start with Gorgasm, then you yeah. change with Gorob, but at both both worlds start with G. So I yeah. may that's that's from the curious thing, and maybe there is a reason behind everything. This concept G use G, G Gorgasm G Gorod. So and yeah. and this is the reason, and this is the reason that is still in the band to this day today, and up and perhaps over the years this special meaning changed over the time with a lot of albums, with a lot of experience, etc. etc. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, this the thing that uh, Yokes will actually explain everything because yeah, sure they were compelled to change the, the name because of the orgasm, but the thing they had a logo and they didn't want to change it too much. Mm -hmm. So to keep the same, you know, to, typography, the same look. So how would it change? So it had it had to start with a G. Ah, okay. And the I know they told they told me they made a brainstorming, and with a lot of names. So that start that uh, so how can we change it? So it has to be not too short, too shorter, or like a super long name. It has to be kind of average. So sure, there is a bit less letters, but the new logo that had to fit with the old one. Like if you see Gorgasm or Gorod, you can be confused. So that was the purpose. They were the brainstorming, and in the end, the this there was this word Gorod that they all voted for this. So this was the. <laughs> The, this was a typical democ democratic <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> decision. Okay. But sometimes, yeah. sometimes I I thought that the G, bueno, Goro the same is the same meaning for orgasm. So I, I I think so perhaps. And and Goro doesn't simply it does simply mean a city in Russian. Ah okay okay <laughs> yeah. I didn't know like <laughs> yeah there is a city like yeah one of the oldest city in Russia which is named Novgorod it means new city. Mm. Simple as that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, very simple, very simple. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we are very close to end this interview, Julian. And for uh, for, and for this, so what are the future plans that the band has for this new this new album? Perhaps you are preparing more videos to promote this new album. Yeah. I saw that you will well, you will embark on a tour in the US in the next couple next couple months, and perhaps mm. you will embark more tours in European. And who knows when the next couple of years, perhaps or months, perhaps you will prepare your first Latin tour here because never Gordon never played in Latin America. I would love to do that. And I've never been there in my life. And you know, also, uh, as mentioned before, I'm an art historian. I'm really into heritage and to architecture, sculpture. And you know that South America is a treasure, <laughs> like everywhere. <laughs> so for, for me, I would feel like Disneyland. So not only for playing music, but also for that. And I know that really people have, like, when I think about Mexico, I know that the guitar is some of traditional instruments. So people know think about the guitar, not only the metal heads, but everyone. So I know there is a lot of passion about this music. I would love to experiment this. And actually one of my oldest friends from high school just landed in uh, in Mexico now, is in, in Guadalajara. Guadalajara, uh, yeah. Guadalajara is there. And I was like, oh, you are there. I want you to go there too. So we we really think about booking a show a tour there. But Actually, we didn't still manage to get like in touch with the promoters or the booker, but the thing is not really my job, to be honest. Uh, I just hope that with our agent or agency, they will manage to, to make it together. But yeah, as far as we know from now, what is scheduled is next week we release a new single, brand new single with a video. We made a, some kind of something that we never made before. <laughs> you will see. So this is kind of new. And yeah, uh, and then the US tour. But uh, still no tours scheduled in Europe, just uh, shows, like isolated shows and festivals. But yeah, we will see. That's, that's... What, what's coming next is what is scheduled when we already announced. Um, yeah, so US tour and festivals in Europe, and that's it for the moment. But I hope that in 2024, we'll finally manage to go. Yeah, South America <laughs> would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there are so oh. many places to go there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. Well, nice, nice to nice to see, nice to hear. So, well, one of the one of the last questions for this interview. So, so as mm -hmm. you said, Gorod started with their career in 1997 when the Gorgasm name at that time. Yeah. Then changed into 2000. Then changed it. Then changed to Gorda, the name that we know. Mm -hmm. So, but um, since since Neuro Neuro Strip Six 
you all yeah. we know that the, at that time the technical death metal around the world with bands with production there are few because Gold was one of the first bands in France to play technical death metal mm. progressive elements etc. But now you you pick a stone in the in the streets and the behind or uh, uh, down of the street down of this rock down of the rock you see a lot of bands a lot of albums yeah. a lot of singles a lot of videos so perhaps what is your opinion about now the technical the progressive stuff in general into death metal do you think that this is too saturated with a lot of bands, with a lot of music, with a lot of albums, singles, etc., etc.? And perhaps do you have time to hear new bands in this style, or perhaps you stick to the old classic like Dead, like Gorgasm, like Gore Goods, mm. this kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah, so I know there are a lot, lot of plenty of new good bands, but in the end, I'm not listening to them that much on the album. I'd rather go directly to live shows and see how it sounds on stage. And this is the way I discovered most of the bands I really enjoyed. And because uh, the problem, so we all know that it's what we call super production and all of them time to time sound exactly the same. They're using the same superior drummer tracks and you can recognize drum tracks, the vocals are using the same effects. Everyone is playing on the same axe FX, effects on guitar. And so time to time, it's hard to make a difference between the bands when you listen to the albums and like, and even if the composition is interesting, but when you see on stage, there is less, it's harder to cheat on stage than on the album, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. And so then it makes it way more exciting. And what is funny, I don't have any example directly in my, that was pops up in my mind, but I know in festival, yeah, there was, I, I was in the Brazil Assault Festival the, in the summer, we played there, but I was there as the, um, in the crowd and staying there watching bands. And I remember that, yeah, I was listening to, um, they were played early, there was Humanity Last Breath, so this kind of thaw music, that's the new thing that they play, super heavy with super down tune as a string. And when you listen to this kind of bands on the album, that from to time, it's hard to make a difference. But on stage, yeah, they were good. I remember I have a super, really an amazing memory of, of that show because there was something specific. And it made me think of a core bomb. Core bomb is like, crazy stuff but i didn't expect that this band would make me think about it because it's there's nothing to deal with that but when you see them on stage okay there is some kind of, kind of connection because a lot of electro a lot of extras that makes something that makes the show interesting and also a lot of like we they call it deathcore scene or this is strange because time to time deathcore is considered as metalcore, so is the one with clean vocals, or is this the extreme part? Is this the suicidal, suicide silence like, or is it more like the uh, attack, attack like, <laughs> whatever? <laughs> it's hard to make a difference on it. But yeah, I remember what, one of the show I really enjoyed the most um, in this kind of bands. And when I listen to it on the album, I, it makes me nothing, but it was the um, Die Art is Murder. And on stage it was fucking awesome really that, that show was a blast and because i was like okay on on the album everything is perfect but on stage this sounds the same but with a yeah. crazy energy and i was like okay this is a band and also there is a many of uh, let's say old school style that are regaining uh, some attention like uh blood incantation for instance i saw them twice live and i was like okay some some like old school modern and everything of that this, uh, there is a bit of noisy stuff that I really like, and so yeah. So I try to to stay into the <laughs> into the trend, like to not 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 to be to feel like an old fashioned dreamer who said like the only the old music from the eighties or the nineties were the great one. But yeah, sure. As you mentioned before, there are so many, yeah. so many now. It's super hard like to stay focused. So what is that better? So I try not to. I'm not a, like a music seeker like I used to be when I was younger. I, I wanted to have the single. For instance, I, I have the first here uh, version of the Necrophagist album. I mean, the very first one. 
um, that was okay. in, on the French label. I have it home. So I was I was this kind of nerd, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I, I used to be like to have okay, this is yeah, it's only hundred uh, hundred copy will make up this one. Hey, I have one. So, but again, yeah, now I, I and also when you are making music, you have a sure less time of chasing music. I mean, or maybe I've um, I've been interesting in other things, but. So the way I'm discovering new bands now are directly live. And I still have a lot of very good surprises. So I think, yeah, even if the market is overwhelmed, there are still plenty of good ideas. So so I don't lose hope <laughs> with the new scene. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, I remember over the last years, because I remember one thing that you said, I want to ask a lot of the history in France talking about the technical death metal because I think you are the first one playing this kind of music mm -hmm. in France because I, ne I, yeah. I, I, I I don't remember other bands. But the other band that I remember from 2000s is Pitbulls in the Nursery, a band that yeah. a lot of people forgot of this band, a great band usually, a great musician. So, well, yeah. so now, then one perhaps I think Gorot and Pitbulls in the Nursery are the only two bands that play technical death metal at 2000s. But now there's a lot that's differently the idea. So yeah, what's your opinion about the technical death metal in France doesn't have a complete sound compared like the German or can Canada. Canada has a great stones into the technical death metal stuff mm -hmm. until now with the last band Arxpire. It's a great band it's a great band with a personal sound and German yeah. necrophages, obscura, a lot of bands. And so what's your opinion about the tech, the, the, this kind of sound that doesn't have a personal identity into the France in technical death metal? I think it's really um, more, much more complicated because um, you know that rock music is not really cultural here. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not a traditional music. So when you are making just playing rock music, you are making something that is... That, Usually people don't care, but sure, sure. Since there's, for instance, uh, the Hellfest, this kind of festival changed the game completely because now it starts to be more mainstream and trendy. But before that, and also there is no, there was no proper scene. I know, you know, like there was, there was one band in the very north of France, one in the south, one in the southwest, and then the other was it. Not communicating that much to together, so there is no. Pretty often, what was really happening? But you know, when I was younger, like 20 years ago, when we were going out, there was not a single live pub which were broadcasting metal. You were we could listen listen metal. So I mean that all the metal scene were going out in nightclubs, listening to Eurodance music and stuff like this. So we had no possibility to create a proper scene, and there was like only couple of practice room. And when different generation of musicians well, were meeting together, but we have different kind of also tastes. And also what was really fashionable in the beginning of the 2000s was the new metal. So there was a lot of new metal bands, yeah. but not that much of extreme metal. But the thing is that the new metal was pretty trendy. I mean, in the way after 2005, 2006, it was over then. So then sure, um, metalcore uh, was the new thing, then deathcore. So let's say that time to time metalcore is the new new metal or something like this. But this scene don't really manage to, to last for, for real and so this is why in the extreme music we were so few bands that it's hard to make a personality that to exchange so everyone is pretty much isolated in the end and most of the metalheads don't know other metalheads <laughs> they just know their friends they go to nightclubs or they go to a party they go to a um, football match or rugby or something like this but not really creating a proper scene like in the US like you know, like and also, it's harder to. It used to be harder to tour here, because there was no that that much venues. So when you don't have pubs and venues, it's hard to create. I mean, yeah, proper, yeah, proper scene. I mean, the way that people are meeting each other. But now it, it, it's changing a bit. Hmm. No, it's it's really yeah, getting right. easier. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Because Go Gojira is one of big example from France that uh, yeah. put the bass put the flag. From I think from Goji from France sound from French sound I think I think so they open the gates to everything yeah yes, yes. yeah yeah so and, well and, Julian 
the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me. Uh, congratulations. Yep. <laughs> Cheers, man. So congratulations on the new album. And perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalerium followers? So, yeah, um, we are still really sorry not being there <laughs> since we exist. But yeah, I really hope yeah, we start to work on it. And uh, I know that to, for the one who lived more close to the United States, it's easier <laughs> to see them because yeah, I know that times that when we play El Paso, for instance, uh, people from Ciudad Juarez come often there. <laughs> so I say hello to them and I hope we meet you again when we're going to play in the in Texas. But yeah, the, um, I would really love to go there one day. I guess that the most of the band also. And we know, we know, we know that we have a, a lot of listeners over there. And the only thing I can say is that we hope it's going to work. We are trying to work on it. So please, if you know promoters, email us, tell us you wanted to play and make us some offers and we go. <laughs> and finally we meet and we can say cheers for real. <laughs> 